hello dear beautiful people and welcome back to my channel welcome back to yet another video if this is your first time here hey my name is lizzie and i'm a second year medical student at the caribbean medical school and as you can already tell from the title of this video today i'm going to be sharing with you guys how i went from practically failing in medical school to getting a so if you're interested in seeing how i did that then continue watching so a little backstory about myself, I'm a second year medical student and I'm in my fifth semester which is the last semester of basic sciences so I'm at the tail end of basic sciences. I have a few weeks to be done with second year. So in this video I'm going to be sharing how I was able to improve my grade right from my first semester down to this very semester. So the things I'm sharing in this video do not take me one semester to achieve, it took me the whole of my first two years of medical school to be able to achieve these grades and I'm going to be talking specifically about my school and their grading system so I'm sure this grading system might apply to some schools but not every school but I just want you guys to be able to get a feel so I'm going to put up here the grading system of my school like what an A means what a B means what a C means I'm just going to put it somewhere here so that you guys can see so let's get right into it I'm also going to be looking here because my computer is here so that I don't make any mistakes in what I'm saying. Okay, so as you can see here, my very first exam, my score was a 59.59% and the pass mark to get a C is 70. So I got 59, that's way below, way, way, way below the pass mark. So I failed that first exam and I had to write a remedial. So with that, I'm going to share my first tip. The first tip is to actually tell yourself the truth. That's something that has really helped me throughout my first two years of medical school. It's telling myself the truth. After this first exam, I had to go back and look at things and I was like, okay, why exactly did you fail this exam? And I noticed that I have two reasons why I fail exams. It's either I don't understand the material properly or I'm not fully understanding the questions that are being asked. So for this very exam, the reason why I failed was because I resumed late and I resumed a week to this particular exam. So I did not understand what was going on. So I did not understand the material. That's why I failed. Which comes to our next tip. The next tip is to actually evaluate. So going on to the next exam, I plan to understand, since I knew where I was weak, I plan to understand the material properly. So my next exam was for the musculoskeletal system and I was like, okay, I'm going to try very hard to understand this material properly so that I don't feel and I don't go below 70. So I tried, I tried, I tried, I studied and I was able to get 73.92%. So that is just like I just barely crossed that 70 so I got a C. And I was very happy, I was very excited. I was like, ah, oh, thank God, that means I passed. I, I was not going to write a remedial. That was something to be happy about. Which takes me to my third tip. My third tip is to actually ask for help. Medical school is already hard on its own and it's a lot of work. The closed mouth cannot be fed. Nobody can know that you're struggling if you don't ask for help and if you don't tell people your problems. So something that really helped me in school is asking people for help, whether it was people that um, a class above me, whether it was my seniors, my classmates, my friends, the lecturers, if I'm not understanding something, I'm going to open my mouth and say, I don't understand, come and help me, help me explain this, or do you have any questions, do you have any materials, how should I go about this course? And then the next tip is to actually study with people. This doesn't work for everybody, but it really helped me. I had two study partners in these first two years of school, my two friends, Iliana and Difu, and I chose to study with them because they are very serious people. So when I'm slacking and I'm not really studying as hard as I should, when I see them studying, I'm like, mm -mm, my friends are studying, I should actually be studying. So how we study together is that when it gets close to the exam, we come together and study, answer questions and bounce information off of each other. If you can, find people that have the same goals as you, that has driven as you, study with them. It usually helps. It helped me a lot. We'll go on to the next tip. It might sound very cliche, but this next tip is to know yourself and to know your study techniques. This really helped me. 
moving on to my second semester in school so my first semester in school I was just experimenting different things I tried to see if I was a visual learner it was if I was an auditory learner if I was I don't know I just tried so many things I was experimenting so many things I was like okay do I study better when I'm with friends do I study better alone but basically my first semester I used it to experiment and try to figure out how best I studied so by the time I got to my second semester I'd already realized that I study very very easily I understand things very easily when I watch it as a video and that really helped me because I wasn't spending time doing irrelevant stuff I just already knew that okay just watch a video you understand and I also realized that I am a morning person I do very well when I study early in the morning or very early in the morning like 1 a.m 2 a.m 3 a.m those are the hours i'm very very productive so knowing that so knowing what times of the day that you assimilate better will really really help you it really helped me now coming on to my next point my next point is to study smart so what i mean by studying smart is if you know how medicine works you know that there are some things in the course material that are high yield so there is there are the testable concepts there are the concepts that always get tested and then you know that there are some things that they are mm, they are not as important as the others so when i mean study smart i mean study the things that are highly tested the things that will always get asked so there are two ways that i used to figure out which things are more high yield than others when I'm trying to study for an exam so the first way is to actually listen to your lecturers so most lecturers I've noticed always highlight things that are important they'll say oh this is high yield take note of this and um, pay attention to this this is easily tested and um, this is highly tested you're going to see this on your exam so when lecturers say that actually pay attention to those key things because more often than not they are going to ask it even if they don't ask it in your exam in your major exams external exams they are going to test those concepts so pay attention to that and another way to figure out which things are more high yield than the others are through questions doing questions you would notice that some topics are more highly tested than some other topics so that will help you know where to place your attention that will help you know which ones to focus on more than the others and another thing that i did that helped me propel my scores forward is to actually study and make sure that I pass my internal exams. We call them summative in my school, but some schools call them midterms. So if you pass your summative exams, you have less work to do for your finals. How I used to see it is that if I pass my midterms or my summative exams, at the end of the semester i have less work to do because i've already done very well on those exams so at the end of the semester i don't really have to kill myself to try to pass the course i already know that i have low-key passed the course with or without my final exam so that also helps me to propel my scores forward another thing i used to do is that my school has formative quizzes before the summative exam so a formative quiz is basically a non-graded quiz so it's basically for you to see if you're actually understanding the course so far so in my first semester when i came i did not know the importance of the formative quizzes i just used to say mm, it's not graded then there's no need for me to read it but by the time i got into my second semester I started taking my formative quizzes graded or not graded i started taking them very seriously so i will study for the formative quizzes as hard as i will study for my end modular exam or my summative exam so let me show you a good example here so this is a formative exam and on the formative i scored 85.45 and then at the end of the module at the end of the system when it was time for the main midterm that is graded i scored in 91.38 so i took my score from a b to an a so if you i noticed that when i put work in to study for the quiz that is now graded by the time i come to study for the quiz that is now graded i don't i'm not doing too much work i'm, I'm already it's something i've already done before so i'm just reviewing so it helped me to do better so if i do well on my formative i know i'm going to do better on my summative so that really helped me so this leads me to my next tip and the next tip is to actually be consistent 
medicine is very very voluminous the material that you have to cover is plenty is very very plenty so if you are you have the mindset of putting things off i'm not saying that i don't do it i do it sometimes but it's very very detrimental to your academic progress be consistent once um, you start a new module actually start studying start studying you may not put in hours and hours and hours like you're studying for an example try to follow the lecturer as he's going and be consistent with it so that when it comes to time for the exam you're not learning new things so it's things you've done before you're just reviewing it again and then if you see something more than twice the chances of you actually knowing what it is is higher other than when you see something once and you just go into the exam you may go into the exam and you may not remember what you saw but if i've seen something once i've read this topic once and i read it again and when it came to time for the exam i looked at it again it would be very hard for me not to be able to answer questions regarding to that topic if you start studying early then you don't have to play catch up it doesn't become too overwhelming for you it doesn't feel like you're reading a lot of things if you're taking it one step at a time small 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 you're going so coming to this result this is a result that i got this semester on one of my exams and it took me from md1 to md5 to finally get complete 100 get 100 over 100 in an exam and it was a combination of all these tips i had to ask for help i had to know my study techniques i had to change my study techniques severally this semester especially because some of the things i did for md4 and md3 were not working for me in this semester so i had to experiment and i had to change stuff up i had to ask for help from my seniors that have started clinicals that have done this before me so nobody's an island everybody needs help anyway so these are the tips that basically helped me to go from a 59 percent to a hundred percent in my studies and it took me my two years of basic sciences to do that so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up also if you want to see the resources that i used in my basic sciences that helped me that also helped me but if you want to know the video resource i used what textbooks what question banks to use let me know in the comments down below and i'll be sure to make that video for you so i'll see you guys in another video bye